Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the, well, Genasi lore. We just finished up a really fun stream, uh, so now we're going to be running the information on the Humbling War um, that really kind of built up the start of a lot of the lore in the world. <clears throat> so, but before we do that, um, if I next uh, river song... Uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and start um, kind of working on So this was handled almost immediately. Now, the humbling was done in the year 7001 BC, so it would have been during the end of the Age of Chaos. So at this point um, in the timeline, uh, the High King has been crowned in roughly the year 7000 BF. So we're going to start this. At the end of the Age of Chaos, and as many races would, uh, at the time would record it as the end of the God Wars, the Genasi, who had come out almost unscathed during the massive war, uh, now stood to gain the, the most, most from the weakened races, um, and the remaining gods who ruled, though the, uh, high king stone had not yet been crowned. Uh, the many gods were on the are on death's doorstep and were one push away from being destroyed. At this time, or nope, during this or during the year. 7001 BS, the, oh, I shouldn't put Genasi, it should be Pacab. <clears throat> Pacab. We'll fix that later. Um, year 7000 BS, the uh, Pacab had finally mastered the martial arts known as the Hmm, what's a good term for it? Um, acronym of, of divine, divine. Um, antonym for divine, there we go. Um, we'll do that, yeah. The, f okay. The the facade, all right. Um, okay. The P facade, a uh, fee facade, um, or, uh, yeah, fist, um, which in common is said to translate roughly as the demonic fist. It is said that this once proud temple who, uh, where monks specialized in hunting uh, divine beings and beasts alike uh, would stand strongest amongst the nation's warriors. Primorial, uh, who at the time was known as the demon of the east, would 
declare outright war for the seat of the high king ship that stone the corrupt was still attempting to attune toward. During this time, Primordial knew that uh, Stone could not leave the, ch the throne and thus would be weakened without his ability to fight hand to hand, let alone without his axe. Thus, thus the, oops, the war began with Primorial leading the charge, and we need to check something actually, God Creation. Okay. With first stealing the godhood of the two sons sent to deal with him and his army. Grom and, because we have Grom and Aethel Wolf. Aethel Wolf. It is said that when they arrived, Primordial used the power of one or one of the lost um, elemental uh, forces, we'll say, to um, chain both and begin the blood ritual. What Primorial did not know at the time was that both Aethel, Wolf, and Grom had come willingly, knowing they would lose their godhood and divine powers. For it is said that Aethel, Wolf, who been granted the, uh, the ability to see the future, knew, knew exactly what his father would become and refused to be a part of it. Thus, the two gods are said to have given their power willingly. Oops willingly to Primordial and the Jin or Pakab people. What Primordial and the two brothers did not account for was when Nyx would arrive post ceremony with an army of great Walls known purely as the ancient river wolves, uh, wolf tribe. Uh, a long lost knoll faction that had lost its sentience in exchange uh, for immortality in service to Nyx himself. With Nyx's army, it is said that the cities of the Cobb fell one after another as their walls could not hold back uh, the blows from either the river, uh, ancient river wolf tribesmen or the bow that Nyx was so f famous for carrying. During a particular battle, 
it said that Nick's River Song would gain his name as he summoned up a massive uh, body of water with a single song played from his harp like bow in which the um, in which the um, uh, capital at the time would feel the full wrath of um, this battle would later be known as the as the humbling for primorial and does he die in this day I think he does okay uh, as uh, the battle would later be known as, as the humbling for primorial and all of his kin would stand on the walls fighting tooth and nail for every inch ground against the massive horde of uh, great wolves that Nyx had brought with him. As the last <clears throat> stand, the Cobb people, Primorial continued to rally his troops with the thought that should they lose, they would be uh, wiped from the face of Silencia, which would later turn out to be half true. Oops. Nope. Yeah, no, thank you. Oh, all right. As the battle or days went on, the siege continued as a bloody and fierce fight until finally Nyx Versong's massive uh, water elemental he had summoned would appear and drown the city in a single uh, day with no survivors remaining in the city Nyx would revive those who had chosen to fight beside Primorial and offer them a simple deal. He would either continue wiping out every single cob that existed on the face of Silencia. There we go. I have to like respell it every time I'm talk uh, as I'm going through because I can't like it doesn't visualize otherwise. Uh, because that exists on the face of Silencia, or he could, uh, or they could swear fealty to the three pillar church forever more and only teach the understanding and respect of both high king stone and his son nix river song should they choose this option he made it clear that he would be sealing away the god or the divinity they had captured in a single weapon um, to which the cob would be for 
river tasked with guarding. The nation accepted this A and the history of the what was it? Uh, Phi Assad Fist or Fist would be destroyed and those who could still who could still practice the art would be hunted to their last the <clears throat> monastery itself would be destroyed by Nick's river song and replaced with a massive chapel now known as the um, High Church of the Three Pillar Church. And the item as well as the formation on this demonic uh, martial arts was said to be sealed far below with the ancient uh, where was it ancient river wolf tribe and the water elemental that Nix Nix could no longer unsummon all right that's the first one done not nearly as bad <clears throat> so okay yeah I'm gonna I cha did change up a little bit of it but that's okay uh, this is gonna be heading five instead there we go all right next and by the way we don't have oh we do have shagnar up still and we do have um, Nick's River Song still to build. Uh, let's do him real quick. Nix would forever be uh, the main patron of the Bacab people after the humbling and is said to not be able to be slain unless the Bacab were to be completely wiped out. Thus, he is one of the only gods whose divine power, though not a true god, is um, unable to be removed from position, and is said to have been in, uh, been at the end of the history books. Or at the end, or uh, at the end of thirty-five or thirty-seven A.S. Right. Yep. Um. In uh, at the end of thirty-seven, in in hiding amongst the macabre, waiting for his time once more. All right, that one's done. My nose just itches every time I come into call. All right, Shagnarok. The daughter of the primordial goddess and revered by the Kakab who still refuse the, um, refuse to bend the knee. Shag. Narok is looked on as the last hope to return to the old ways of the Pacab and is recognized as the true successor and god amongst uh, the old ways. Though very little is seen of her public worship 
it is said that every Pacab uh, hopes for her return um, in secret and plan to do all they can to help with this. Nope, nope, not what I wanted. Uh, hitting five. Perfect, so that's done. Majority of the rest of these are done, so it's really just writing these last couple of wars. Because we don't need the technological era at this point. We're not going to be doing something with that. Um, yeah, we're going to be getting rid of these. So we, oh, we do still have this section to do. And then I am just going to go ahead and remove this completely. All right, makes it a little easier. Okay. Uh, let's continue working on this. Okay, the Great War that would allow. Oh. I mean, the war, the uh, the horde of changelings would hit East, conquering the entirety of the Genasi and want to even slavery, and creating a legacy of both the Great Brown Bear and the Great Ma Grand Magi, the Screaming Opossum. This would lead to the first creation of sound magic. Okay. Um, the chaotic ravaging would be known to many the other races who were conquered as um, the darkest period in their history. However, for the Cobb, this would not exactly be the case. While the nation was conquered, much of the Cobb went of lands are said to have now let me double check something have I finished the changelings no because we are going to rename them later so okay um <clears throat> this is going to eventually get a rewrite anyway so it looks like I wasn't I didn't go into a very large thing okay that works for me then um, all right. The chaotic ravaging would be known to many of the other races who were conquered as the darkest period in their history. However, the Pacab, this, uh, for the Pacab, this wasn't exactly as well. Their nation, as much of the Pacab lands, uh, are said to have been left alone. This is said to be due to Nick's River Song's protection. Um, in a show of good faith only a year after the humbling but in truth the changelings knew that um, going and destroying the nation after it swore fealty and became one of the main protectors of the ancient or of the uh, three pillar church it would cause more issues amongst the uh, changelings to destroy them than was worth at, uh, at the time however it is noted that the Cobb resistance is said to have fought in a few small towns, though none would truly stand any sort of a chance. Do we have a, nation, a ruler during this period? No, it'd be afterwards, because it's in... It's 697. Yeah, we have 6995, so it'd be during the, uh, or didn't the, um, charring. Thus, the great brown bear would allow a prince to rule in, or in the, or a, not a prince, uh, let's grab the title properly. What was it? A chow, a chow soy, chow say. Okay. A chow say to rule in exchange. 
exchange that they swore fealty to his clan. This would lead the Cobb to not be exactly slaves, but rather a, a vassal nation who provided both religious and uh, economic services to the great brown bears clan and empire. It is also to note that one of the biggest reasons the Yuan T dis like the uh, Cobb is due to the uh, Cobb nation uh, assisting in slave processing and creation of slave collars for the great brown bears new new empire and slave resource all right easy one to do this is going to be a pretty that was going to be a pretty light one no matter what we did so that was one of the reasons we did it all right heading five perfect all right now the charring charring was a word for two melting of the changeling crown and the capture of the entombing of the bear clan by the Yuan-Ti hives after six generations of continued rule and decline since the loss of the great round bear the changeling empire had struggled to hold on to the massive lands however upon the death of the fifth emperor known as the golden bear the Yuan-Ti hives began war by slaughtering the clans of the snake managing to slaughter them down to the last member with the yuan beginning a war uh, the goblin race and the genasi were not afraid far behind this would spawn the final fall as the last emperor would be slain in battle while the other brothers were nowhere to be found okay um the charring wars are known to actually have been uh oops have been four different occasions with the Yuan T rising up multiple times and slaughtering many um, changelings Lings, um, as the fights continued. However, it is also known that the Bacab were hesitant at first to rebel having found much uh, economic um, increases to their land and power during the Golden Bears rule. But when the time came and the Yuan T began to win with the goblin nation also joining the war the cob f finally showed their true colors by using the command that had been given to the shisoi command word been given to the Chisoy that deactivated deactivated all collar or slave collars uh, that had been made by the nation, thus causing a massive slaughter amongst many of the changeling clans as their slaves who had been training and working extensively and thus in a, a great physical condition would all begin their rebellion with the destruction of most of the head clans. However, a secondary note must be made that while the Macabre did um, t 
turn the slave collars off and assist in arming the slave rebels. It should also be known that, that the Cobb Chisoy um, did hide away many of the uh, royal family in case these of the slaves losing and thus gaining more favor with the ruling faction. When the war concluded and not a single cob drop of blood had been spilled, the Chisoy decreed that the the royal family of the brown or of the bear clan had been slaughtered uh, to appease the uh, enslaved nations. Though, if this is true, no body was ever accounted for or confirmed. Thus, many the Yuan-Ti and Goblin species or er, races uh, still to this day do not trust the Cobb people. So yeah, making them more of a, in a sense, a lighter um, faction, I think kind of fits because it makes sense that they wouldn't want to start another war. They're not here for another war. So it kind of fit that this would be like the end of everything. So we got the that, we're gonna go ahead and set these up real quick so that we can call this done. And hopefully, we're also gonna quickly just make this look a little nicer. Okay, hitting five. Hitting five, and lastly hitting five. Yep, there we go. All right, and what we're gonna do, quickly clean these up, cause oops, you know how this goes. We wanna make sure all the uh, text looks good and is easy to read. Otherwise, there's no point. Okay. All right, and thus the Pacab have, oh, we haven't done the uh, map. Never mind, we haven't done the map. Uh, so we do have uh, one of the things we need to do real quick. So let me go in to my races. Um, for example, we'll go in here. I'm pretty sure there's more of these done than anything else. Um, so we want to use city info. And then unique locations. Per oh. Bring that down here a little bit. There we go. Um, and then that's it. Okay. We won't do a technology period at this point. So, all right. For city info, um, let's look at our map. <sighs> what do we got here? We have the main capital here, which is known as, I believe, in the Age of Death as Durgesh, I believe was what it was. Um, let me see something here. Let me look at the version from yesterday. What was the name of that? Uh, Pedrash. Pedrash. Okay. Okay. Never mind. All right. So we need Pedrash. Pedrash. Okay. Perfect. Pedrash. Now this is heading six. This will be or this will be heading six. So there we go. Um, Known as the capital and said to be in the ancient Pakab tongue as city of demons. This is the city of demons. This city gained 
its name after the creation uh, or uh, after the humbling. Oh, actually, yeah, that's well known. Humbling in which Nix River Song had the Chasoy. I think that's how it's pressed. Oh, nope, I didn't spell it right. Chasay. I gotta make sure I'm doing that right. Damn it. There we go. Had the Chasse um, rebuild it with the central um, pillar of the city being the great uh, church of the three pillar church. Um. Much of the city is covered in small monasteries with each uh, being a embassy from one of the four uh, uh, in the nation. And it is said that at any time in Pedresh, you can hear the cob chanting to uh for the high king stone and his sons uh the city actually that's pretty much it i'm gonna leave it at that i'm not gonna give it too much um all right we'll do hopefully my beard's not bad right now uh Great church. We need a better name for that. Mm. No. The high church. There we go. That's the term I was looking for. Not the great, the most unique name, but it works. Uh, the high church. The main attraction for all pilgrims of the three pillar church uh, it is said to be the grandest of all structures in the known world with massive pillars of gold and oventium mixed together to hold the uh, bright blue roof that reflects the sun and causes a strange, almost particle-like effect across the city. And with its massive uh, dark iron, or what, why did I capitalize the dark iron bell, the city can be heard for miles when church begins and the bell rings every day at 8 in the morning and 8, you know, at 8 morning and eight at night all right so another really well-known location this is also the what? this is also the home of the uh, let's not call it that let's see mm. Just trying to see a word here. Mm, we don't like that as much. Trying to come up with a really good name for it. Um, what do the dwarves actually speak? What's the language I chose for them? Um, because they would have, oh, we also have to bring all these boys into here. Yep, um, because we're not done with them yet. 
The old world door. No, the Vida the Oliveres. Um, they speak Chechen. Okay, let's try that. Do 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 do. Is Chechen not? Uh, Okay. There we go. Nope, not Cherokee. Chechen. Um, I'm just saying if it will actually translate, it might not. Oh, shit. The site is just terrible, yeah. They, they want to make you pay for... Uh, Alright. Uh, okay, so... Let's go here. Um... Uh, no f examples. Uh, oh. No translation. Okay. What about the. Uh, that does. Oh, Leka is the translation. Okay. Okay, so. What about. Um, okay. Da. Okay. Well, that's what we're going with. Da. Alright. Uh, it's also the home of the Da. Is the high priest of the three pillar church. Okay. Uh, it is said that his quarters and living... Um, conditions would make an emperor jealous for how magnificent they are. And this and his faults of long lost or forbidden artifacts are said to be um, Vast beyond any uh, conqueror's dreams. Or, um, if I could spell artifacts right. <laughs> okay, so those are going to be the only two known locations for that. Um, we have to do the, the four monasteries. Uh, so let me grab them. Alright. I'm going to bring that up here. Um, okay, so let's continue. Uh, we'll keep this up. Uh, all right, we've got, okay. Mang Khan Vod, which is, we'll put Dragon Temple. We have Taiyuan. I think that's it. No, T A U A N. Yep. Uh, Vod Sun Temple. Then we have Nagao Vod Shadow Temple. And lastly, Sadha Vod Pious Temple. Okay. Um, said to be a single temple, large city wrapped around it like the others. The Mangkon Vod uh, reaches 
far beyond the eyes of a normal uh, commoner and is sh uh, is seen as a single white almost pyri uh, pyramid that has a, a large jade dragon that was carved by the first uh, let me find that in uh, at the Khan Bodhi uh, in the shape of one or, or in the shape of, of the last jade dragons known to uh, walk Silencia before the splitting. Okay. Let's go ahead, heading six. Next, uh, oh, this temple lays to the south and guards the massive, uh, ma or, uh, was it, uh, what's uh, the word I'm looking for here? Like the fissure in the earth, um, guards the massive. Uh, river I well actually here let's let's look at the cities so actually let's look at the geography map uh, cuz there's Pedrush okay so it would have been down here um, yeah the guards the we'll say guards this pass uh, for the Ruby bags it's a massive river pass that the uh, Yuan T hives are known to traverse and it is said the Mangkon Vod as an underground town that uh, specifically watches for any potential Yuan T invasions as well as sends their young recruits into the tunnels to uh, pass a sort of initiation by killing a beast that follow or that traverses these tunnels. Okay, next the Taeyuan Temple that is said to. Uh, have or is shown in the east with its massive ruby sun sculpture at the top of a very squat tower um, uh, it is said that the ruby itself when uh, the sun passes, or the light from the sun, sun passes through it, turns to pure mana and elemental magic, allowing those who train at the temple to um, grow stronger from uh, medi oops, meditation in its path and allows them to open their key paths further than any of the other temples. Okay. Uh, the Shadow Temple is in the west. The Nagao. Nagao. God, um, or Shadow Temple, is said to be a underground structure, 
And it's going to be in the east, so let's look. Yeah, we'd say it'd be over here. Okay. Designed around the rehabilitation of escaped slaves from the goblin nation um, that it, it guards the borders of. This temple allows for all of its trainees to practice the hidden arts of both shadow manipulation um, as well as slave rehabilitation. Um, the Nagao temple is also the only temple to still pra practice and understand the art of slave collars um, due to its close proximity oops, to the border in which uh, many slaves from uh, all over the goblin nation traverse. Oops. Okay, and then lastly, the pious temple in the north. Don't need you anymore. Okay. Known for uh, the Sadhavad or Pious Temple, it's well known for its large recruits uh, recruiting of high elves. Or, no, don't need to capitalize that. High elves in as well as the practice of ritual cannibalism uh, of the old and dying. This is due to the cultural acceptance of the old high elves and the understanding of its nation's way of gaining power. This is also the only temple in which one can learn how to siphon magic and, uh, or mana from another being without having to consume them. Though these arts are only taught by the or to the highest ranked amongst their uh, covenant. Sure. All right. Perfect. Now we do this extra long video today, which I'm ecstatic about. And it kind of finishes up part six of the uh, thing. Perfect. All right. So we are done. This nation is ready to go into my er the race area. Uh, we can quickly move it over. We're going to move to the lore done, but artwork needed. Perfecto. So they are now considered a done race. All right. Thank you guys for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed part three, and we will see you next time.